Eric glanced at his father, who was once again attempting to have a serious conversation with him. The young man didn't quite understand what Joseph wanted from him, because the man shouted so loudly that soon Eric's mother came running to the living room. You don't understand anything. Do you even know how hard it is to earn money? Instead, you hang out all night, not thinking about the future. Joseph continued to scold. Eric lowered his head and pretended that he understood his father perfectly, though in reality, memories of last night's fun at the club were the only thing on his mind. He would gladly repeat the party one more time. Dear, please calm down. I think Eric understands everything, said Marilyn. The woman often tried to protect her son from frequent attacks by her husband. She felt that he treated their child with bias and simply vented his frustrations on him. Although, on the other hand, Joseph was largely right. Lately, Eric had not been valuing his parents at all, constantly hanging out somewhere and not considering the fact that soon he would need to work and take care of himself. Eric stood with his head down until his father completely ran out of steam and stopped shouting at him. Can I go to sleep now? Eric asked with a smile on his face. No, just look at him. I've been scolding him for an hour and he's taking it all as a joke. Marilyn, this is all your upbringing, said the father, getting worked up again. It's unbelievable. Last week he crashed such an expensive car and how lucky he was that he didn't hit anyone. Now you'll be driving your old car. Joseph, stop shouting at him. The boy understands everything and realizes everything. Let him go to sleep. He'll handle it, I promise you. I'm in shock. You won't get any more money from me, Eric. When you get a job, then we'll talk. The father waved his hand and went to his study. Marilyn winked at her son, indicating that now was the time to go to his room and finally to go to sleep. Eric looked at his mother closely and went to his room. Marilyn finally breathed out. She fixed her hair and went to her husband's study. Joseph, let's have a serious conversation. There is nothing to talk about. You're helping your little son in everything. Look at what he's become. I'm ashamed to look at him. And it's embarrassing to admit that he's my child. Joseph, calm down, Marilyn pleaded. If you came to talk to me about Eric, the conversation is over. I will not give him a penny any more. When will he start earning a living for himself? After all, he is already a grown man. But he doesn't know anything yet, especially since he's still studying at university. I know how he's doing at university. I just haven't told you. But they've already called me from there. Please give him another chance. He will definitely improve. Your shouting won't solve anything. Look at him. He's still a child. Remember yourself at his age. You also used to hang out at night and think of nothing at all. That's not true. At 22, I was working in a factory in my spare time. Marilyn slowly stroked her husband's hand. She tried to persuade him to be kinder to their son. She was terribly tired of constant family arguments. Joseph had his own business, to which he had devoted almost half of his life. The man earned well and was a well-known person in the city, and Marilyn was just a housewife. She had never worked anywhere in her life, and during arguments, Joseph would sometimes say that Eric looked very much like his mother in this. Eric was studying in his third year of university and was fully supported by his parents. The news that his dad wouldn't give him any more money scared him a little. However, he hoped that, as always, his father said it in anger and would completely forget about it within a few hours. But this time, everything turned out differently than Eric thought. He woke up after five hours and went to the kitchen. Mum was there, as usual, making some pies. Mum, where's Dad? He's in his office. Do you need something from him? I had better not go there if I were you today. He's so angry. 
that I'm scared too. Yes, I need some money. We want to go to the tourist camp with my friends this weekend. Oh, Eric, honestly, I'm not sure about that. I don't think your father will give you any more money. How can that be? I'm still studying, and I can't physically go to work. I don't know. Do you want to talk to him yourself? I've already talked to him today, and it didn't end well. Eric scratched his head and, with a thoughtful look, went to his father's office. Dad was sitting at the table and sorting through some documents. He pretended not to notice when his son came in. Dad, let's talk calmly without shouting and arguing. Well, let's talk. I'm listening to you carefully. I think you're going a little too far. I haven't done anything to deserve you taking away my pocket money. Do you seriously think your behavior is normal? And you haven't done anything wrong? Exactly. Look, I'm paying for your education. I bought you a car that you crashed. I gave you a place to sleep. I buy the food you eat. And I am tired that you don't value anything. I'm telling you again, you won't get a penny from me anymore. Go, work, do what you want. If I find out that your mother is giving you money, I'll kick both of you out onto the street. You're both getting on my nerves. Eric attempted to reason with his father, but ultimately found it to be futile. He then went to the kitchen to speak with his mother. Mom, Dad said I won't be getting any more money, but how will I live? I'm still studying. Well, I have some savings, but they're minimal. Your father doesn't know about it. No, Mom. He said if you give me any money, you'll be kicked out onto the street with me. Let him dare said his mother with a smile. Eric stood in the kitchen for a while and then went outside. He decided to meet his friends and find out where they worked, since he had to do the same. Today he realized that his father was determined and unlikely to change his mind. Eric arrived at the cafe where his friends had already gathered, greeted everyone and sat down at the table. All of his friends were there with their significant others. So, Eric, how are you doing? Why are you so gloomy? One of his friends asked. Well, I don't even know how to say it. I just had a fight with my dad. He said he won't give me any money anymore. That's not a problem. You obviously have credit cards. Use them, and your father will pay later. To be honest, Eric had forgotten that he had credit cards in his father's name. He smiled and took out the credit card heading to the bar, to order himself a cocktail. Sorry, your card is not working, the bartender said. The bank refuses to pay for your purchases. I see. Okay, I'll call the bank right now to find out what's going on. Eric took out his phone and called the bank to find out why his credit card wasn't working. They told him that all the cards were blocked by the owner of the bank account. The guy was in complete shock. Did his father really decide to never sponsor him again? Eric returned to the table with his friends looking sad, and they immediately understood what had happened. Eric, you just need to get a job. Where should I go? I'm still studying. So what? I, for example, also study, but I work as a waiter in a cafe. Seriously? You work, but why? You seem to have well-off parents, right? Well, why not? So that I have my own personal money. You know, my parents don't give me that much. I don't know. It seems to me that I won't be able to do it, since I've never worked before. Well, it's not that difficult. They will teach you everything. I don't know. I need to think about it. Eric came home only in the morning, furious. He was angry with his father, who had embarrassed him in front of his friends. The guy rushed into his room and immediately began looking for his gold cufflinks, expensive watches, and other valuable things his parents had given him. Eric decided to sell everything for money and rent a place far away from his father. He quickly packed his bags and hurried downstairs, where he came face to face with him. Where are you going with such a huge suitcase? It's none of your business. 
You blocked my card. You might as well have suffocated me. I don't want to talk to you any more. Well, it's my gift to you. Finally, you will become a serious person. Dad, get out of the way. I don't want to see you any more, and my feet will never set foot in this house again. Marilyn ran after Eric. She wanted to stop him, explain that his father had just gotten a little too hot-headed. He just needed time for everything to fall into place. However, her son didn't want to hear anything. Straight from home, Eric went to the pawn shop where he left all his things that he had been collecting since childhood. He didn't get as much money as he expected. However, it was enough to pay for two months of rent and food. Eric rented a small apartment and decided it was time to go to work. He wanted to prove to his father that he would not be lost without him. The guy opened his phone and started looking for vacancies. However, every job vacancy required experience, but Eric had none of it. The guy sat for a while longer, then called his friend Barry. He wanted to know where Barry found his job, the one he was working at now. But his friend told him that he got the job through acquaintances and that it was difficult now. So what do I do? I can live separately for those two months at most, and then I won't have enough money to buy food. Listen, but two months is also a period of time. I think during this time your father will come to you himself and ask you to come back. I'm not going back there. I'll find a job and everything will be fine for me. Well, see for yourself. If you need anything, call me. Eric sat on the couch and didn't understand where to go to work. He really wanted to prove to his father that he could earn money, live independently. In fact, he had long been angry that his father did not perceive him as an adult. He had even heard his father and his friends talking about him, and his father had said that nothing good would come of him. Those words were forever etched in his soul. But he did not lose hope that he would still find some kind of part-time job. He still went to university. After all, education was critical, and he understood that perfectly. Most of all, he was surprised that during this time, while he was living alone, his mother didn't even call him once. Although he understood perfectly well that his father probably just forbade her to do so. She was a person under his control. Today, Eric was sitting in class and looking closely at Angela, whom his classmates constantly teased. The girl looked poor, and many simply did not understand what she was doing in this expensive university. Sometimes, he thought about the fact that he would soon be wearing all sorts of tasteless stuff, like Angela. He really didn't want that but everything was moving towards it. During his break, his friend Barry approached him. Listen, I can talk to my uncle. He's opening a new restaurant and they need all the staff. Are you suggesting that I work as a waiter? Eric smiled. Well, why not? Do you have a choice? No, there's no choice. Talk to him. I'm ready for any job. Well, then I'll tell you tomorrow what we're going to agree on. He's coming to visit us today. Okay, I'll wait for news from you. Eric was on his way home, thinking that he never imagined he would work as a waiter serving staff. And for him, it was very embarrassing. He was afraid that his friends would laugh at him. However, he knew that if he didn't find work in the next few days, he would have to give up even food as the money was running out. The guy's pride did not allow him to call his father and admit defeat. The next day, Barry told Eric some critical news. He said that his uncle was willing to take him on his team. Oh, thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you. Hey, do you want me to tell you a secret? What, other secret? My uncle hired our Angela too. You know... The one who walks like a ghost. She has some problems. I don't know how she managed to negotiate with him at all. Are you serious? Am I going to work with Angela? 
Well, I'm not surprised. She definitely needs a job. I look at her and understand that even in the worst of times, I don't look as bad. The next day, Eric went to an interview where Barry had sent him. There, he saw Angela. Hi, what are you doing here? Eric pretended not to know that the girl would be working with him. Well, I decided to take a part-time job. And what are you doing here? I also decided to take a part-time job. I thought guys like you never work. Angela looked away, inadvertently offending Eric. Guys like me, on the contrary, work a lot. I see. Okay, I won't bother you. Eric was hired for the job, just like Angela, and now they were colleagues. Since the young people started working together, Angela seemed less boring to Eric. Of course, he had always liked entirely different girls. However, since he had run out of money, these girls also disappeared. Now Eric went to his new job every evening. In principle, the work was not difficult, and he didn't get as tired as he initially thought. One day, he finished his work as usual and began to get ready to go home. He quickly got dressed and headed for the exit when suddenly Angela called out to him. Eric, wait, please, don't go anywhere. Eric stopped and waited for his classmate, who was tying her scarf on the go. What do you need? Eric, could you please give me a ride? I need to get home urgently, Angela asked him. A ride? Well, I'm not rushing today. Let's go, Eric replied. Eric wasn't really keen on taking Angela anywhere, but today she had a look of panic in her eyes. The man thought that something must have happened to her, otherwise why would she have turned to him for help? As it turned out, Angela lived almost at the other end of the city, and Eric became genuinely interested in how she usually got there. Angela, how did you get here? There aren't any direct buses or subways here, are there? He asked. I take two changes, just like I do to get to our university, she replied. Wow, I probably wouldn't bother to travel so far, Eric said. I have no other choice, so I have to. I don't have a car, and it's cheaper to take public transportation, she smiled. Eric wanted to ask what drives Angela to wake up so early and travel so far, but he couldn't find the right words, so they rode the rest of the way in silence. Eric returned to his apartment and lay down on his bed. Angela revealed herself to him from an entirely different side. In fact, there was an adorable girl behind this ridiculous attire. He couldn't get her out of his head. He was genuinely interested in why she worked at the restaurant. Why did she attend an expensive university but look so poor? She had so many secrets that Eric wanted to solve. Now every day he rushed to work all to see her again. He no longer made fun of Angela with other guys at the university and even tried to defend her sometimes. Do you have nothing to speak of? Leave her in peace, Eric asked his friends. Eric, I don't understand. Why did you suddenly start standing up for Angela? I'm not standing up for her at all. It just hurts me to see how you're degrading, Eric said. Eric mostly talked to Angela at work. It was very interesting to him that she was nothing like the girls he used to surround himself with. He realized that he was starting to like her. He was afraid to admit it to himself, and of course, he didn't know how to tell her about it. One day after work, the young man stood by the restaurant. Today his shift ended an hour earlier than Angela's, but he decided to give her a ride home and to get to know her better. Angela came out at the right time and immediately headed to the bus stop. The girl flew past Eric so quickly that he didn't immediately understand what was going on. Angela, wait for me, please. Eric, I'm listening, just walk faster. If I miss the bus now, I'll have to walk home later. 
Then let me give you a ride. I've been waiting for you for a while now, and I just want to talk to you today. Angela smiled, and Eric felt a warmth in his soul. Well, if you really want to let me down, I don't mind in principle. The girl got into Eric's car and they drove towards her house. Eric really wanted to tell her that he hadn't been able to sleep for over a week without thinking about her, but he thought it would sound ridiculous, so he didn't say anything. The only thing he could say was that if she ever had time, he'd love to go out and have coffee with her. Thank you so much. I didn't think you were such a nice person. You look very different at the university. Well, if you ever need a ride or anything, just let me know. Angela looked at him, then kissed him on the cheek and ran home. Eric drove back. The mark of her kiss still burned on his cheek, and it made him feel good to remember it. He couldn't sleep again, all spinning and thinking about the girl who was still a mystery to him. It was all rather strange for he had never felt this way before. But at the same time, he was also very ashamed. He wondered how his friends would react if he started dating such a poor girl. He couldn't stop thinking about it. Finally, having decided that he didn't care at all about the opinions of others, Eric finally fell asleep. A whole month went by like that, and he didn't even notice how fast the time was passing. Eric received his first salary and was very surprised. Before, he could easily spend such a sum of money at a nightclub. Now it was money for the whole next month. Eric couldn't cook, so he often went to cafes, but he actually missed the home-cooked meals his mother used to make for him. Sometimes, Eric would call her to see how she was doing but his mother spoke to him very timidly and kept repeating that his father was still angry with him. As for Angela, now Eric communicated with her very often at the university. They recalled funny moments related to their work. And you remember that client who was sitting by the window, stroking his belly funny? Eric reminded Angela. Of course I remember. He's a very funny man in his own right. Eric's classmates looked at them and didn't understand what was happening between them. Why had they become so close? This situation amused everyone a little, but at the same time made them tense. Especially the girls, whom Eric used to be close to, didn't like it at all. One day, leaving the classroom, Eric asked Angela to help him. Angela... Please don't think anything wrong. I have just no one else to turn to. Well, you know my story. My parents rejected me, and I really don't know how to cook at all. Lately, I'm exhausted of always having to go to cafes for lunch and dinner. And besides, it costs a lot of money. Do you want me to teach you how to cook? She widened her eyes. I would love that. And we also need to go to the store together because I have nothing to cook with at home. Angela looked at him, smiled, and of course agreed. She, too, became attached to him, and could no longer imagine a day without him. Before, she couldn't even dream of it. Well, I'll help you buy groceries, and teach you something to cook. In the next day off, they spent their evening in a grocery store. Eric watched Angela carefully, observing how she chose products. The girl read the composition, looked at the price, and Eric had never done that before. After they paid for their purchase, the young couple loaded the heavy bag into the car trunk and drove to Eric's apartment. Eric, I'll just show you how and what to cook and then go home right away, she said embarrassed. Yes, of course, I'll take you there. At home, Eric spread the products throughout the refrigerator. Angela immediately began to prepare, although before that, she washed a huge pile of dishes. Eric sat at the table and watched carefully as the girl chopped vegetables, washed the meat, and how the process of cooking borscht took place. 
He was so interested in watching this that he didn't look at the time at all. Well, that's it. You can try it. The girl smiled and fixed her hair. I'm sure it's delicious. While you were cooking here, I almost went crazy from the smells. Thank you very much. Angela smiled again and put a plate in front of Eric's nose. You know, I think I'm going to ask for more. He smiled. Yes, please. As much as you can eat. After a hearty dinner, Eric began preparing to take Angela home. Well, did you remember how I was cooking? Can you repeat it yourself? Honestly, I didn't remember anything. But now at least I know whom to turn to if I want to eat. I was looking at you, not at what you were doing. They laughed and then went outside. It was late at night in the yard, and the air was very fresh. Eric had never noticed before that it was so easy to breathe at night. Usually he returned home at that time from the club, and then he didn't pay any attention to such little things. Angela, thank you so much. Thanks for the most delicious dinner. Thank you for being here with me. The girl blushed sharply. She didn't expect such warm words. They were driving very slowly because Eric didn't want to part with her. You know, I probably should have confessed for a long time, but honestly, I still don't know how to choose the right words. No need to pick anything. Just say how you feel. Well, to be honest, I think I'm starting to like you. I can't handle it. Every night I think about you. Are you serious now, or is this your joke again? Of course I'm serious. Can you joke like that? I don't know. They arrived at Angela's house, and she quickly jumped out of the car and ran home. The guy didn't understand anything. She didn't say anything about his confession of love. It became somehow awkward, as if this confession had spoiled her mood. However, the next day. She looked entirely different. Today, she even wore light makeup. Listen, Eric, you suggested having coffee. Let's do it today after work. With pleasure. After work, they sat in a cafe, drank coffee, discussed different topics, and Angela admitted that she also likes Eric. Moreover, she had liked him for a very long time, and yesterday's confession. Surprised her a little, so the young people started dating, and every day Eric understood more and more that he had never loved anyone before. Everything was like a fairy tale. They cooked together, and in general, Angela did everything to make Eric feel comfortable. It turns out that even without a lot of money, you can find your happiness. The young man's life became noticeably brighter, and he felt loved. Was there anything else he needed for happiness? But one day, Eric's life turned upside down. Eric, I think it's time for you to meet my mum. She's been pestering me with questions about where I disappear all the time. Maybe we can go to my place tomorrow. Of course, with pleasure. Great. Then I can stay over at your place tonight, and tomorrow we'll go to my place. The next morning, the young man woke up early and rushed to the kitchen to make breakfast for his beloved. He wanted to do it for the first time in his life. He didn't know what was happening to him. Wow, is that for me? Asked Angela, entering the kitchen. No, not for you. It's for the most beautiful girl in the world. Angela wrinkled her nose and kissed Eric. Eric, you just need to understand me correctly. What's going on at my house might surprise you, but I still hope you're a reasonable person and you'll keep yourself under control. I don't understand. Are you trying to scare me? I wonder what I'll see. Just wait until we get there and you'll see everything. The young people began to get ready to go to Angela's mother. Who had raised her alone her whole life? What he saw there shocked Eric. A very pale woman was lying on the bed in the room. She weakly smiled as soon as she saw Angela, 
It became clear that this woman was sick and couldn't walk. Meet my mum? Eric also tried to smile, although he clearly didn't expect to see this. Hello, I'm your daughter's friend. Yes, I've heard a lot about you. Angela took Eric by the hand and dragged him into her room. Now do you understand why I work so hard and why I study so well? To be honest, no. I'm completely confused now. University education is expensive. Where do you get the money from? From your house? I see that you're not rich. My father pays for my education. It's the only thing he's ever done for me, and I work to save for her treatment. But it seems like an unattainable dream. Why didn't you tell me about this earlier, Angela? I could have helped you with something. Oh no, I never want to ask anyone for help. I'll earn everything myself. Angela told Eric about how hard her life was, how she had to wake up early to avoid being late for work, and how difficult it was to get enough money to finally get her mother back on her feet. After hearing her story, Eric was deeply affected. He spent a little more time with his girlfriend before going to the city. He didn't go home, but straight to his father's office. The young man decided to ask him for help. Hey, son, I thought you forgot you had parents. Dad, you kicked me out yourself, but I didn't come here to argue. And what did you come for? The car I'm driving, you bought it for me, but it's registered in your name. I want to sell it. Why? Life's really got you down? The father chuckled. No, I want to help someone who's important to me. You see, my girlfriend's mother is really sick. I want to help her. It's her dream to get her mother back on her feet. Eric told Angela's story, and frankly, Joseph was shocked, because he never thought that his son was capable of helping someone. Son, I'll help you. You don't have to sell anything. Just tell me how much money is needed, and I'll pay for all the treatment. You know, forgive me for yelling at you so often. And anyway, come back home. No, Dad, I'm not coming home. If you don't understand, I'm currently dating a wonderful girl. If everything goes well, we'll live together. Son, you've grown up so much. You're not the same person who ran away from home with suitcases not long ago. It was probably not for nothing that I yelled at you. If I hadn't done all that, probably you'd still be sitting on my neck. Well, that's not true, Dad. In due time, I would have become independent anyway. Come here. Let me give you a hug. He stood there hugging. Eric missed his father too, and sometimes he missed his sharp words. I never believed, until the very end, that you would change. I was afraid you would remain the same person who didn't care about anything, who wasted his life on empty things. His father said to him, No, I have changed. Now an entirely different Eric stands before you, Eric replied. His father smiled. He had never seen his son so serious. Later that evening, Eric went back to Angela's and told her that there was someone who could help. Angela, just tell me how much money is needed and where are you planning to receive treatment? We will pay for everything and it's not for you. It's for her. Angela resisted for a long time, but eventually agreed on one condition. She would still repay the money. Angela's mother was taken to the best clinic and started undergoing treatment. Improvement was noticeable after a month of therapy, and the doctors said that she would be able to stand on her own feet. Eric and Angela started preparing for their wedding. Joseph was deeply grateful to Angela, who had changed his son. Eric was no longer interested in nightclubs or partying until morning. He got a job in his father's company. Now, he had wholly different values. He just wanted Angela to smile and be happy every day, and he was ready to do a lot to achieve that goal.